Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. We are in the beautiful Queenstown of New Zealand. Recently, I've had a lot of questions uh, from you guys saying, shall I sell my DJI Spark and buy the Mavic Air? That's what this video is about. I'm gonna go through all of the pros and cons of everything about both drones. And by the end of this video, you're gonna find out exactly what drone suits you and your needs. So let's go straight into it. So I have had the DJI Mavic Air for the last month and a half now and I feel like I'm at a position where I can actually give my best advice about the Mavic Air. And before that I had the DJI Spark and I had that for four months and I got some incredible shots all over the UK and Ireland. So today's video is going to be a mixture of Mavic Air footage and Spark footage just so we can get a full picture of exactly what they look like when they're performing at their best. <music> So on the DJI Spark, you only get one picture profile and it's really contrasty and it is quite hard to edit. Um, I've had some experience now editing it and I've actually made some LUTs which you can purchase down below if you are interested. But yeah, there's only one picture profile and that can be a bit of a downer if, if, you are, if you're looking to grade and, and get more out of your Spark. Uh, the DJI Mavic Air has two picture profiles. It has the similar one to the Spark which is the really high contrasty uh, sort of image. But it also has the D-Log, which is a real sort of low contrasty, higher dynamic image. Um, so when you do take that to your laptop to grade, you've got so much more dynamic when you play with the shades and also the highlights. It really like stands out for me. And that is one of the main reasons why right now I'm using the Mavic Air. So yeah, think about the options. Um, one picture profile with the Spark and two with the Mavic Air. Right, next up is the battery life. And with the DJI Spark, you get 15 minutes. And with the Mavic Air, you get slightly longer at 21 minutes. Um, I know that there's only an extra six minutes on top of the air, but them extra six minutes is, you know, six minutes worth of more footage. Um, and it does feel like a lot longer when you're actually flying the drone. But battery life is battery life. If you want to stay in the air a bit more longer, get the Mavic Air. But you can actually get multiple batteries for cheaper with the Spark. So in the long run, the Spark might be better for battery life. Um, but yeah, just keep that in mind, figure it out. But Now with the DJI Mavic Air, it has a huge range of frame rates. It goes from 24, 25, 50, 120, and even 240 at lower resolution. The DJI Spark sadly only has one frame rate and that is 30 frames per second at 1080p. It is HD, but it's not 4K. Um, but if you do want a more professional frame rate, you want to be shooting at 24 frames. So if you are using the Spark, you do have to slow it down to make it look more professional. But yeah, I think the DJI Mavic Air totally wins over that, over the frame rates. And slow motion footage in the air just looks incredible. So um, yeah, the, the Mavic Air totally takes that one. Next up guys is the resolution and the DJI Spark again only has one and that is 1080p at HD. It's HD, it's good, but it's not 2K, it's not 4K, which the Mavic Air has. If you're like me and you're only uploading to 1080p onto YouTube, then the Spark is pretty much all you need. Um, but yeah, if you're looking to go big, the Mavic Air is, is the answer. Right, next up is the sensors. And the sensors are so important because these are the things that are actually going to stop your drone from crashing into a tree or going into the water or whatever. You know, these sensors can see stuff around them. The DJI Spark has two. It has one on the front and it has one underneath. So if you're doing them pan back, pull back shots that I love doing with the uh, drone, you won't be able to actually see what's behind you. You could just go straight into a tree and I've done that a few times. I have crashed the Spark four times, I think, because there is no sensor on the back. If there was a sensor, I probably wouldn't have crashed it. However, the Spark bounced back off, it was fine. It's actually quite robust. However, the DJI Mavic Air has three sensors and that's on the front, below and the back of the drone. 
so now I can get the pullback shots and if there is a tree or anything in the way, it will be able to see it and actually go around it. Oh no. The gimbal is, is incredible on the Mavic Air. It has three axes, so it goes left and right, back and forward, and the other one, like this. It, it moves in every direction, and that's exactly what you want in a gimbal. Sadly, the DJI Spark only has two axes, and it goes up and down and tilts like that. But it doesn't go left to right. And I find the worst thing about that is if you want to fly your drone to the side and get them sort of like circular shots that are really cool, it sort of judders. The screen will judder and it doesn't look good. And that is the one thing that really annoyed me about the Spark is that I couldn't actually fly to the side. So yeah, the gimbal is huge for me. And again, another factor and reason why I am using the Mavic Air right now. Right, next up, we're gonna be talking about the size of the drone. And the DJI Spark is known to be the smallest, you know, the, the, the small drone. That's what everyone talks about, the Spark being the small drone. But the thing is, is once you've actually got the Spark and the air, once the, once the air is all folded down and in its little case that you travel with, it's actually smaller than the Spark. And that's with the remote as well. The remote, you can actually unscrew the little knobs I uh, don't think that's the right word, but you can actually unscrew them and you can actually put them inside the controller. Um, so it makes it even flatter. And yeah, this is this actually makes the Mavic smaller, but the Spark is smaller, um, if you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, so if you're traveling and you're, and you're transporting it, the Mavic is smaller, but once it's all folded out, ready to fly, the Spark is smaller. The Mavic is bigger. Yeah, you know what I'm trying to say. Now I've managed to take the spark to around 400 meters, as in distance, um, before it starts beeping and sort of returning to home. And it loses signal quite quickly when you're around the 400 meter mark. Um, with the DJI Mavic Air, I've, I've actually taken it to around 900 meters and then I decided to actually bring it back because it was getting a bit too far. And, but yeah, I think you can really push the limits of it. Um, this is the max distance for the spark and this is the max distance for the air. I'm gonna Google it later because they're not in my head. So here they are. <laughs> I hope that helps. Right guys, last but not least is the price. And the DJI Spark is currently 650 US. And that is for the combo. You get extra batteries and all the fiddly bits that you end up throwing away anyway but mainly the batteries. Oh, and the remote, you get a remote control. That's actually really important. Um, make sure you get a remote control if you do get the Spark. Don't try to be flying it with, with the phone. It's really tough and you get a really small amount of range. There's no point. So yeah, that's $650. And if you want to get the DJI Mavic Air right now, that's a thousand bucks. That's a thousand US dollars. Um, so yeah, just, just you really got to put that into perspective. Um, that's for both of the Fly More combos. They've both got extra batteries uh, and all the little fiddly bits. But anyway guys, I hope you have enjoyed today's video. I hope it's been insightful and I really want you to comment below and tell me if you are going to be selling the DJI Spark for the Mavic Air or if you do have the air or the spark, I want to know your choices, your decisions, and why you've decided to stick to it. If we get a little chat going, you know, we're just going to share more information about each drone so people can really figure out, you know, what to do with, with their money and what to do with their drone. This is your choice. It really depends on what you actually want to use the drone for. If you want better battery life, different flying modes, different sensors, whatever, you really need to put this all in perspective and figure it out and I, and I hope this video has has helped you so yeah thank you guys for watching we're loving Queenstown right now um, we're going to be filming some really good stuff here over the next few weeks uh, with the Mavic Air so if you are interested please hit subscribe hit channel notifications you will be notified when I upload another video and yeah just enjoy life be happy smile it, it's a bloody awesome day I'm loving today and I want you to love today as well 
So yeah, take care guys, peace out, and I love you lots. Peace.